So in this video, I'm going to talk about Newton's second law. And uh, previously, I talked about uh, Newton's first law. And uh, in this video, I'll explain what Newton's second law is. So when a resultant force acts on an object of a constant mass, let's say this is a mass. And when a resultant force acts on an object, let's say the force is in this direction. Let's say for now, this is the resultant force. And this object, let's say this has a mass m kilograms. Now this force, this resultant force, will cause this mass to accelerate, right? This resultant force will cause the mass to accelerate. There will be an acceleration. And remember that, that this acceleration is in the direction of the force. The direction of the acceleration is in the same direction as the resultant force. So this gives us an important result that is F is equivalent to MA where F and acceleration both are vectors. So I can write it like this as well. So this law states that the resultant force when a resultant force acts on an object of mass M it will cause an object to accelerate. I'm going to write here when a resultant force acts on an object of a constant mass an acceleration will result with the product of its its mass and acceleration equal to the resultant force. Equal to the resultant force. And remember that this force is always the resultant force. This thing is always the resultant force. Right? And as, I, as I've already told you that the direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the resultant force. This is something very important. So let's say you have a mass of 1 kilograms and uh, a force of 1 newton is being applied on this object. Right? The unit for force is newton in the honor of the great man newton. So this force is 1 newton, let's say. Then the acceleration would be F is equivalent to MA and I'm going to put here 1 and this is also equal to 1 and this acceleration is then 1 meter per second square. Right? So the SI unit for force is Newton. For force is Newton. Capital N. Right? And uh, this is the force required to produce an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on a body with a mass of 1 kilogram. And another important thing here is that uh, the second law also uh, applies to the weight of an object. Let's say you have uh, an object of mass 1 kilograms and you know that acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square in O levels. Right? So, as I write F is equal to MA, I can also write it like this. Weight is equal to MG, since weight is also a force. So, this thing is the same. The weight and the force, they, they are the same and the acceleration and acceleration due to gravity are also the same. So, this is the second law. Moving forward, I'm going to tell you that uh, the second law also applies to the unbalanced forces as the first law, this Newton's first law applied to the balance forces where uh, if an object is moving at a constant speed in a straight line, it will keep moving in a straight line and if an object is rest, it will remain at rest. That is an example of a balance force. So Newton's first law was about, about was about balance forces. But the Newton's second law, when there is an acceleration, 
when the force is applied that is about unbalanced forces and that force may either accelerate an object or if it, it can also decelerate an object we'll see that so Newton's second law is about is about unbalanced forces the forces are not balanced if the forces are balanced the acceleration is zero and the object moves with a constant velocity or constant speed right so let's say I'm going to give you an example of the unbalanced forces as I've already told you that the first law is about the, the example of balanced forces uh, the second law is an example of unbalanced forces let's say this is a trolley and uh, let's say there is a tension in this trolley it is attached to another trolley let's say and there is some tension here right and uh, there is a force of friction as well so if the tension is greater than the frictional force that will cause an object to accelerate in the direction of the resultant force you see the resultant force if tension is greater than the frictional force where f is the friction friction and let's say this is the tension in the rope so if the tension is greater than the frictional force uh, the resultant force will be t minus f and this t minus f would be greater than zero right that would be greater than zero and the acceleration will also be in the direction of the resultant force the acceleration would be in the direction of the resultant force as this second law states so the acceleration would be in this direction and similarly if you have uh, a car which is moving like this let's say and uh, the, there's there's a forward force by the engine and there is a frictional force let's say by the tires and there's a drag force or air resistance let's say the forward force is greater than the sum of both of these forces then your answer to this would be the resultant force would be f minus the air resistance i'll write it as let me write it as r plus the frictional force between the road and the wheels is equivalent to ma so this is my resulting equation right the forward force is greater than the air resistance and the frictional force due to the tires and the road so that's why the car will accelerate in the direction of the acceleration so the direction of the acceleration would be in the direction of the resultant force right so this is what we can uh, expect from this law and I'm going to give you a small example let's say there is there's a mass of four kilograms right and uh, the frictional force between the box of mass four kilograms and the floor is 15 newtons so this is the frictional force that is 15 newtons right and it is pushed across the floor with a constant force F it is pushed across the floor with a constant force F and it accelerates it accelerates with an acceleration of let's say 0 0.8 meter per second square so how can you find this force my question is how can you find this force so this force can be found out by this expression F minus 15 since this is the resultant force F minus 15 the forward force minus the frictional force is equivalent to the mass the mass is four kilograms so I can write it here ma right so this is my resultant force this thing is my resultant force R resultant force and I can write it like this F minus 15 is equivalent to the mass which is four kilograms and the acceleration is 0.8 because this acceleration is due to the resultant force so the my forward force is now this expression which is around 3.2 newtons plus 15 so the forward force is 18 newtons right so this is an example of an unbalanced force and this unbalanced force can become a balanced force if the forward force is equal to the backward force if the forward force let's say an object is moving with a forward force of 40 newtons and gradually the backward force increases right 
first it was it was 20 then 30 then 40 when this forward force is equal to the backward force this object will move with a zero acceleration because the resultant force is now 40 minus 40 because I'm taking a positive towards the right and negative towards the left so the forward force minus backward force is now zero newtons and now I can say that since, since f is equal to ma this zero over whatever the mass right the acceleration is zero meter per second square so that mean, means that that whatever the force let's say the forward force is 100 newtons and the backward force is also 100 newtons whenever the forces are balanced the acceleration is going to be zero the acceleration is going to be zero so this was a brief explanation of the Newton's second law now I'm going to show you a simulation which will help you understand the concept of Newton's second law uh, with a better perspective. So let's move there. So this is one of the uh, simulations from University of, of Colorado Boulder. And you can see here that the forward applied force is 100 Newtons and the frictional force is also 100 Newtons. And you can see the speedometer here it is showing you a constant speed of 28.8 meter per second. So forward force and backward force are both equal. And the forces are applied on a mass of 50 kilograms. So what happens if I increase the force, if I increase the forward force, you see, I'm increasing the forward force, and you see the sum of the forces is also increasing. And you see the, the speed is increasing, right? The object is accelerating. And the object, since the object is accelerating, you can see, the speed is it's going to increase right so the direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the resultant force you see this green box green arrow here at the top this shows you the resultant force and now what happened the uh, this the applied force is now zero newtons and the frictional force is now 100 newtons and this speed is decreasing rapidly so the object is decelerating and eventually since the frictional force is 100 newton and there is no forward force the object speed is going to go to zero. Acceleration is also zero meter per second squared now, since the resultant force uh, is zero and the object is at rest. So I hope you enjoyed the video, the simulation as well, and it gave you a perfect idea of how Newton's second law applies to different objects. Thank you very much.